really good about the bishop while he, he while he gone. He texted me last night and he said, are you ready to go? I said, yeah, I'm ready to go. He said, be sure you say good stuff about me. I said, always. So I'm under instructions to talk really good about him. Ain't he awesome? Listen, I, we, we're talking about a man. He's been bringing some word up in this house. And I'm telling you what's the truth. If, if it's not changing you, then something wrong with you. Because it's a word that's going to change your life. Amen? Come on, why don't you give the Lord one more shout and a clap of praise this morning before you're seated. You can be seated this morning in the house. Praise God. Praise God. So grateful to be in the house of the Lord today. The bishop's gone, and I know that I miss him whenever he's not here. I tell you, God's just, just done some awesome, incredible stuff in my life because of this man and woman of God that sits over this house. Amen. We're just so privileged to have a man and woman of God that will take us for who we are regardless of what we might be living in and regardless of what might be happening in our life and tell us that's okay it, it don't matter what matters is you you matter you matter to God you matter to this ministry and it's all right what what might be going on it may not be, you might not have it all right you might not have it all together but that's okay we're gonna get you there we're gonna get you there amen Praise God. I want you to turn with me in your Bible to St. Matthew. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15. I've got something that I want to bring to you this morning. I've, I've, I've read this story, and I know you've read this story before. It's, it's, it's an incredible, incredible passage of Scripture. And there's so much in it. But I want to get right into the Word of God today. Matthew, chapter 15. When you get there, say Amen. If you're not there yet, say, hold on. <laughs> All right. I know there's some of you thinking, they took that out of my Bible. I know I've been there sometime. There's been time they say some, some strange Old Testament book, you know, hey guy or, you know, some of them. I'm like, wait a minute. They took that out of my Bible. Somebody took that out. Hold on. All right, are you there? Look all the way down to verse 21. Verse 21 says, And going away from there, and he's talking about Jerusalem, and going away from there, Jesus withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Now, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, and they're going to have that on the screen here. I, some of you may not have that. I like the way the Amplified Bible reads, so I want you to, if you don't have that and you want to follow along, it's right there on the screen, the Amplified Version. But he went, he withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Verse 22, And behold, a woman who was a Canaanite from that district, came out and with a loud, troublesomely urgent cry, begged, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is miserably and distressingly and cruelly possessed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. Now that... In just a minute, we're going to get into that, but it kind of sounded a little bit mean. He didn't even talk to her. Wouldn't say nothing. And his disciples came and implored him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. And verse 24, he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And she came and kneeling, worshipped him, and kept praying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right, proper, becoming, or fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the little pups, little whelps, eat the crumbs that fall from their young master's table. She understood something here that maybe you ain't got yet, but hang on. We're going to get there. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this revelation that you're giving to us today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, to let this word enter into our hearts and into our minds. Let it enter into our spirit and let us become the people that we're supposed to be in the kingdom of God. And for all you do, we're going to praise you in Jesus' name. And the house said amen. 
Praise God. Now, I want you to understand. Thank you, Jeremy. I want you to understand something. Now, Jesus, in this passage of Scripture, Jesus is passing by the border of Tyre and Sidon. And he finds there a Canaanite woman. She comes to him and says, Lord, have mercy on me. Now, I want you to notice something here. I want you to see how that this woman approaches Jesus. She doesn't come in arrogance. She does not come in hostility or in frustration. But she comes to him humbly. She comes to him honorably. She comes to him as an humble uh, person. Almost, and you know what? She comes to him simply because she, it's almost like she knows that he knows something about her. You know, she gets that feeling that Jesus knows something about you. Ever had that feeling that that somebody you you thought somebody knew something about you that you you didn't think anybody knew, and you got that feeling that mm-hmm, they got my number. You ever felt that way? You nobody ever felt that way. All right. I know you've been that way. It's been, it's been times when I felt like, you know what, I think they got my number. I think they know what's going on. That's kind of how she was. That's kind of how she felt. She kind of felt like Jesus knew something about her. She kind of felt like that he, he kind of had the 911 on her, and, and that's kind of the, the reason that she came the way that she did. But you know what? People pray a little bit different whenever they feel guilty. Now, I'm, I'm talking to, to y'all. I'm talking to the body of Christ, okay? People pray different whenever they feel guilty. When they feel guilty about something that might be going on. You know what? We, we all got something going on. We, we got some things that ain't exactly, we ain't, we ain't always got it all together. If you say that you got it all together, you need to come to me and let me know how you can have it all together. But see, I, I, think, I think sometimes that we see people that look like they got it all together, but I think that's just uh, a little bit fake. Hey, listen, I'm hard, but I'm fair, okay? Sometimes, you know, sometimes we just got to be real. You know, because there are people in the house of God that look like they got it all together. The people in God's house, they're standing out here while the praise and worship is going on. They're, oh, well, you know, they're praising God, and they're just having a great time, and, and they look like they got it all together, but inside, they're all tore up. Inside, they're all messed up because they ain't got everything together. It might look like it on the outside, but really deep down in their heart and in their mind, they ain't got stuff together. You know, you, you come before God a lot of times and you, and you ain't got everything right. You know, but you have to come to Him with a spirit of humility. You know what, God, I know I don't got it together. You know, she, she just didn't come and throw out that request there and say, you know what, I, I got to tell you about my daughter. No, 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 no. She came before Him so humbly. She came before Him. She, she knew that she didn't even have a right to speak to Him. See, because you have to understand that the people from Canaan were, were not a real good group of people because the, see, even that, in that time, the custom was that she couldn't even speak to Jesus at all because in that time it was inappropriate for her to talk to him. During that time, women had to take a back seat as if they were second-class citizens. They had to take the back seat. And see, she would, shouldn't even be talking to Jesus to begin with not, not only that, because she was a woman, she wasn't supposed to be talking to him because he was a man. But not only that, she shouldn't have been talking to him because he was a priest. He was a man of God. He was anointed. But see, this, this woman, this Canaanite woman, she came from a people that had a background of idolatry. She wasn't even a spiritual woman. See, she, she had a need... And she knew where to take it. Even though she wasn't right. Even though she didn't have it all together. Even though she wasn't a spiritual woman. Even though she wasn't somebody who had everything in her life just the way that it should be. All she knew was that she had a need and she knew where she needed to take it. See, what do you do whenever you're on the wrong side of the fence? What do you do 
whenever you're on the wrong side of faith? What are you supposed to do when, when you're not where you ought to be? You know what? I, I tell you, whenever there's things in my life that shouldn't be there, I, I don't feel like coming before God because I feel guilty. I don't feel like I even need to talk to God. I don't know about anybody else. Now, see, all y'all is Jesus Jr. in here. You ain't. You got everything happening right. See, y'all don't ever go through that, but I do. I, I face things in my life that make me feel like I'm a little bit less than worthy to come before the throne of God. And I don't even want. I don't even feel like I can talk to God. But see, you cannot look at your past. To determine your future. Y'all didn't hear me. You can't look at your past to determine your future. Because if you look at your past, your past doesn't say that you're worthy of the future that God has in store for you. Because if we went by what our past was, we ought to be dead. If I looked at my past, I shouldn't even be here today. We can't look at our past to determine what our future and our destiny is supposed to be because God doesn't look at us that way. God looks at us right now and He says, I don't see you the way that you used to be. I see you the way that you're going to be. But we come to Jesus anyway, expecting something from Him. We come to Jesus expecting him to do something. Now, I want you to see here. Now, there, there's something in this. It's, 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 not, it's not written in the scripture, but there's an implication here of something. As this woman of Canaan, she shouldn't know anything at all about Jesus. Because she was a woman that came from a culture that were idolatrous. They served and worshipped idols. So she shouldn't know anything at all about Jesus. But somebody told her that he was going to be in the city. Somebody told her that Jesus was going to be there and they told her what he could do. They told her about his miracles. They told her about his delivering power. Now, you got to you got to think about it like this now. Now, I know that that when we're when we're on our jobs that sometimes we talk to people and we share our faith with them. And there's times whenever we share our faith with somebody they just look at you and they go whatever am I right they, they don't want to hear it but the thing about it is there may come a day when they're going to need this Jesus that you have presented to them and see because you sowed the seed you might not see the harvest immediately but because you were willing to sow the seed and you were willing to water the seed, even though they didn't receive it right then and the harvest doesn't come right now, there may come a day when they're going to need God, they're going to need Jesus in their life, and it's going to click in their mind. Hey, wait a minute. They told me about Jesus, that he could deliver me from this situation. They told me that Jesus could get me out. And see, I'm, I'm imagining that this woman from Canaan, maybe that's how it happened with her, that there was a long time ago that somebody told her about Jesus. And she's just like, whatever. You know, they don't have anything to do with us. They don't want nothing to do because we're not a, we're not a religious people. We, we worship idols. They don't, they, whatever. Okay, whatever. Jesus is in the sea. Okay, fine. Great. Awesome. You know, but then the need arose that her daughter was vexed with a devil. And she remembered Wait a minute. They told me that Jesus was going to be in the city. They told me about his delivering power. They told me that he could do what nobody else could do. That he had the ability to deliver. My, I have got to get to where Jesus is. I have got to get to where he is to be able to, to reach him. Because they said that he could deliver my daughter. And my daughter needs to be delivered from this demon. So she goes to the city. Now see, they, she, she knew that he was going to be there. Now, now why, would, why would somebody even tell her about Jesus? 
Why would they even do that? See, I told you they were they were they were excommunicated from the Jews. They didn't the Jews didn't have anything to do with the Canaanites. You know, but this woman had a problem and they told her about Jesus and she knew that her daughter needed something. So she brings it up. At, she, didn't, she, she didn't tell Jesus her request to begin with. She didn't tell him what was going on because she knew that she didn't have any right. She knew that she was a, a woman of Canaan. She knew she didn't have any right to even be talking to him. But here's what she did. She said, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. Now, I don't know if you know what's going on in that passage right there, but this woman had a recognition of who Jesus was. She recognized that he was the son of David. Now, I don't know if you know what that means, but that whenever she addressed him as the son of David, that simply meant that she understood that he was the Messiah. He was the Messiah over the children of Israel, and she recognized who Jesus was. She recognized him. She recognized that, that he was the son of David. She knew that he was God's Messiah. But she knew that she had no right to approach him. She knew that she didn't even have, she wasn't even living right. She said, I, I, Jesus, I know I'm not living right. I know that I'm not serving you. I know that I'm not good. I know that I'm not clean. I know that I, I, I'm not moral, but I am desperate. Uh, I don't know if you know anything about being desperate or not. Anybody know about being desperate? Does anybody know anything about being desperate in this house? See, desperate people will do anything. Desperate people will do anything. See, you can fight some big old strong somebody, and, and you may have a chance to beat them and to win. But if you go to fight somebody who's desperate, listen, I want to tell you something. A desperate person will hit you with whatever they can put their hand on. Somebody who's desperate will do whatever. They'll hit you in places you didn't know you had. That's what a desperate person will do. They'll do anything to win. A desperate person will do anything to win. Hmm. See, this woman was desperate and she was asking for help. She said, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus said, my mission is to save the lost sheep of the house of Israel. She, he said, I, I, I ain't come here for you. He, he said, I, I didn't come here for you. I'm here for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I, I, I can't help you. It's inappropriate for me to help you. My mission is to the house of Israel. My mission is, is, is to the people of God. The, my mission is not for you. I'm here. And listen, I want you to know that sounds mean, doesn't it? But you see, you got to understand that Jesus was in a dilemma because he knew what his mission was. He knew what he had to do, but he looked at her and he said, I'm not here for you. I didn't come here to help you. I'm here for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he looked at her and he said, listen, you know, I know that your daughter is vexed with a devil. I know that, but I didn't come here for you. I, I, I hate that it's, it's, it's happened. But you see, I, you got to understand, I'm here for the lost sheep of the house. You ain't even part of the house. You're not even part of the body. You're not even part of who we are. You're, you're a Canaanite. You're not even a part of this thing. But I want you to understand something. Jesus, Jesus wanted to help her. See, you got to know that God wants to help you. Listen, here's what was happening. Jesus was just was just being a daddy. Now, I don't know any that listen. I want to here here want to tell you something. You're at home. You're getting ready to make supper. And you got supper prepared for you and for the children. And then you get a knock at the door and you got company coming over. And they just show up. Well, now, you've prepared supper for your family. Now, when company comes over, you, you need to feed company, take care of them. But you know what? Jesus was just being a daddy like any daddy would do and say, You know what? I know your company, and we're going to do what we can to, to take care of you while you're here. But I want to tell you something. These babies, they're going to eat first. 
and then if there's anything left over, then you can have it. That's what Jesus was saying. He wasn't being mean. He was just saying, what I have prepared was for my children. And my children are going to eat first. And then whatever is left over, you can have whatever is left. You know, she was asking God to do something. See, she was, she was asking God to do something in her own life. You know, has anybody ever been blessed even when you didn't deserve it? You've been blessed when you did. I know, I, I know I've been. I know God has come into my life and God has done something incredible in my life when I didn't even deserve it. I'm looking at that thing and I'm thinking to myself, my God, I, 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 I ain't got everything together. I, I, I don't have that. I'm not right. I ain't even been in the house the right way. But God is blessing me anyway. I just don't get it. I just don't understand. You see, what you got to be able to understand today is that God wants to be able to bless you anyway. God wants to be able to, to touch you and bless you even through the mess that you're in. God wants to be able to bless you in what you're living in. See, what she, here's what she was asking. It was like if you be in a, a car wreck in your car and you just pull up over here at the nationwide insurance and ask them to cover the accident knowing that you ain't got no insurance policy with nationwide. They're going to look at you and go, <laughs> well, they are. You ain't got no policy. What makes you think you deserve the benefits? That's what she was doing. She was saying, Lord, have mercy on me. Even though she knew that she didn't have a policy. Even though she knew that she hadn't bought in to the policy, she was asking him for help because she knew that she would be able to get help from Jesus. She didn't deserve the benefits. See, there are times when we don't deserve the benefits, but God wants to benefit you anyway. God wants to bless you anyway. And see, that's what she was doing by asking him and saying, Have mercy on me. But you see, the disciples were telling him, Tell, him to go, tell her to go away. She's bothering us. Tell her to go away. Don't give her no explanation why. Just tell her to go away. She doesn't deserve to be here. How many of you ever know that there are, there are other people that are looking at you going, you know, they don't deserve what, what do you think you, who do you think you are? I, I know. I, I've been there. I've had people looking at me going, who do you think you are? Talking to God like that. Who do you think you are? Asking God. For something. Who do you think you are asking God for a blessing? Look at what you did. Look at where you've been. Look at how you've been living. Come on, somebody. Why are you even standing up there with your hands lifted up? Pray? Listen, there's haters all around you. They're going to be people that's going to look at you and go, Why are you even standing up there with your hands lifted up, giving God praise? Knowing what you did last night. Why are you even standing up here thinking that God is going to do something for you knowing how you've been living? You've been living with that. Hello, somebody. Why do you think God's going to bless you? But you see, I know that I'm serving a God who loves me. It don't matter what we have done. It don't matter where we have been. But see, we are serving a God who wants to be able to bless us, Ryan, regardless of where we are, regardless of what's going on in our life right now. It may not be right. We might not have it all together. We might not have everything in line. It may not be working right for us, but that's all right. We can stand. This woman understood something about Jesus. She said, I know that I don't deserve it. I know that, that I, I don't deserve to be standing up here. But see, she didn't have anything to lose. 
She didn't have anything to lose. She had a problem, and regardless of whether he did it or didn't do it, that problem was still there. She didn't have anything to lose, but here's what she did. She said, I I know that I don't deserve it. I know that I don't deserve your touch, but I'm asking you to have mercy upon me. See, what you don't understand here is, is just here, Jesus began to talk to her. Jesus began to have a conversation with her. <laughs> See, if we could just get God to say something. If we just get Him to say something to us. If we just get Him to talk to us. See, if I can get God's attention enough to get Him to talk to me, that lets me know that He heard me. Oh, come on, somebody. I know that you've been down before and you've been praying and it seemed like the heavens have become brass and that God is not even listening to what's going on in your life. It's almost as if He doesn't care. It's almost as if He is not responding to your request. It's almost as if He's not even listening to anything that you have to say. You ain't never been there. I've been there. It seemed like that he didn't even care. But if I can just get God to begin speaking to me, if I can get him to say something, at least I'll know that he has heard me. At least I'll know that he is listening to what I have to say. Listen, it might be all wrong. Why? Because he's opening up his mouth and he's beginning to talk to you. Uh, It may not be what you want to hear right now. What he said might not be something that you're really wanting to hear right now, but at least you know that he's talking to you and that he heard you. So that lets me know that if he's hearing my problem, that he also can hear my praise. You see, I know that regardless of what I might be in, If he's hearing me, if he can hear the problem, and he's starting to have a conversation with me, I know that he can hear my praise as well. And that's what she understood. She said, you know what? I don't deserve this. I'm a woman from Canaan. I'm an idolater. My people are idolatrous. We, We don't deserve to even be talking to you. I don't deserve to be in your presence. I don't deserve to be talking to you, but I know that you can hear me. So here's what I'm going to do. You might not be able to talk to me. I'm not going to be able to talk to you, but that's all right. I'm going to get right down here, and I'm going to bow down and I'm going to worship you I'm going to get down here on my knees and I'm going to begin to worship you son of David have mercy upon me have mercy on my life I don't deserve you but that's all right. I may not deserve you but I'm still going to worship you Uh, See, you got to understand in the middle of your circumstance, in the middle of what you're in, see, it it tears the devil's mind up whenever you start praising God right in the middle of what you're living in. See, it messes up the hordes of hell whenever you begin to praise God, even though, Miss Vanessa, we might be in a battle. We might be in a struggle for our life. But when we begin to lift up our voice and give God a praise, regardless of what we might be in, the devil gets all messed up. And see, it also gets the attention of our king. It also gets the attention of our God when we begin to lift up our voice. When we begin to say, you know what, God? It's not all right. Everything is is all messed up everything is all wrong my life is in shambles my life is going down the tubes really fast and it but it don't matter I know that if I will stay here and in your presence and give you my worship (laughs) oh I wish somebody would praise him see if I will just stay in your presence long enough If I will just get in your presence long enough. See, she knew that she could praise God because she knew that complaining wasn't doing any good. She knew that crying over the problem wasn't doing any good. She knew that getting angry wasn't making things any better. So she decided that she was going to try something else. She was going to try something maybe that would change this thing. Listen, I want you to know, don't ever underestimate the power of a worshiper. 
Mm -hmm. Don't ever underestimate. Listen, Pastor Marianne said it's so so cool. I mean, it's just so awesome. Just because you're here amongst worship does not make you a worshiper. If you are to be a worshiper, then you're going to have to worship. you got to worship if you're going to be a worshiper. And she understood that. She knew that it wasn't going to change. See, praise can turn things around just in an instant. Your praise can change. The Bible says, oh, magnify the Lord. Come on, magnify the Lord. You've got to open up your mouth and give. Listen, ain't nothing worse, any worse for me to, to see somebody. You know that God wants to bless them and God wants to pour out something on them. And here they stand and, and they go. Oh, I'm, I'm praising in my mind. I'm praising silently. The only thing about that, you, you, think, you, you think you're all right. I'm praising silently. The only problem with that is whenever you get the blessing, you want God to do it where everybody knows about it. Hmm. How you like that? You want God to do it out in front of everybody. You want God to let every, you want everybody to know when God does something. But you ain't willing to let everybody know that you praise God whether he does it or not. See, those of us who are praisers understand that praise releases power. Praise releases power and praise raises you up. Praise raises you above your situation. Praise raises you up above that dilemma in your life. Praise gets you above that circumstance. Praise takes you higher than where you are right now. The woman said, Lord, help me. I've done everything that I know. I've done everything that I can do. And nothing is working. Nothing has worked so far. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to praise you. She asked for help. Right in front of everybody. Right in front of all the haters. And there's some haters out there. They're drinking Haterade. I got that from my son, drinking Haterade. I got that from Jeremy. <coughs> but you see, there are haters that are out there. You ain't got no right. You don't need to be praising God. But you see, even though they're hating on me, that doesn't stop me from getting my help from God. Yeah. See, I know and I understand that even though I'm in this thing, I got to give my God some praise. See, I know that I got to lift my voice and I got to honor him and I've got to magnify him. See, because I, I can't succeed in this thing on my own. I can't get out of it all by myself. I may not deserve your help, but I'm asking you to help me. <laughs> I'm asking you to help me. Mm. Uh. See, God wants to help you. God's wanting to help you. See, all the haters are wanting you just to go on down the road and just forget about you. See, the haters, they don't, they don't care. They're just saying, why don't you just leave them right here? Let's go on down the road and go and do what we're supposed to be doing. It's not right for me to feed you and, and take those, that food from the children of God. It's not right for me to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. He said it's not right. It's not proper. She didn't know much about Jesus. She didn't know a whole lot about him. But after hearing what he said, it's not right for me to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. She understood something that didn't understand about Jesus, but she did understand something about his children. 
she did understand that whenever you give a child too much, that children will become very wasteful. When you give them too much, they will take what you've given them and take it for granted. They expect you to give them more. They're very wasteful in what they get. They're wasteful. When people get used to something, they'll take it for granted. And listen, I want to tell you something this morning. We have sat up in here in this house, and we have listened to the awesome teaching of our bishop and pastor, and we have sat up in the house of God, and we have gotten fat on the Word of God. God is, listen, when you get too fat on the word, you're not hungry anymore. When you get too fat from eating so much word, you don't be hungry anymore. But God is moved by somebody who is hungry. You don't believe me? Matthew 5 and 6 says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. See, God is moved by hunger. You may not always have it together. You may not always get it right. See, you, but you just got to want to be right. You might not be right. You might not have it right right now. But all you got to, you just got to want to be right. You got to be doing your very best and striving to be right. Uh, I know there are times in my life when I don't get it right. I know there's times in my life whenever I mess up, I, I'm, I'm just being transparent with you today. I don't always get it right. I'm not always pleasing the Father. You don't always please the Father either. Don't sit up in here looking at me like you ain't done nothing. But you see, you got to know that I may not have it right. You just got to know that you want to get it right. And you got to let him know, God, I am hungry. For what you have for me. I ain't got it all together. I am not right all the time. But I am hungry to be who you called me to be. I might not be what you see right now. I might not be that today. But that's all right. You're looking at me in my future. You're looking at me in my destiny. Knowing that I can be somebody that I'm not right now. And that's all right. Even though I'm not that right now. I am working. And I am going to a place. I am getting to that destiny I am determined <laughs> see if you act like you're hungry God will feed you up in here all night long if you just act like you want something from God see the woman knows that's right see you, you go feed your kids Jesus, that's all right. I, I understand what you're saying you go right on ahead and you feed your kids but she said something that was incredible. In verse 27, verse 27, she said, Yes, Lord, even the little pups <laughs> eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. She had an understanding and a revelation of something. She understood. I know that the loaf of bread is for the children of Israel. I know it's for those who are in the, the house. I know it's for those who are in the family. Those who are part of the family. I understand that. But I want you to know that even the dogs, even though I may not deserve it, even though you may not think that, that I'm worthy to receive something from you, I want you to know that I even I understand that the, the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. She says, I'll just take a crumb. See, your children are wasteful. 
they waste what they get. They waste your glory. They waste your anointing. See, those of us that are up in the house, many times we waste what God is doing in this place. We waste what God is doing. And she said, that's all right. She said, I'll take what they waste. I'll take the crumb that falls off of the table. And I'll take that crumb and I'll do more with that crumb than what they'll do with the whole loaf. <laughs> See, I'll get what I need out of a crumb. I'll get what I need out of the crumbs that fall from the table. See, I, I don't need a whole lot. All I need is just a little bit of God, and God is going to do something incredible in my life because I am hungry for something that God has for me. If all I can get is a crumb, I know that God can do more with that crumb than he can with a whole loaf if I will just trust him with that crumb. Uh, Mm -hmm. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to live off the crumb. Going to live off of the crumb. See, because I know what God can do with the crumb. Uh, uh, I'm wanting to throw stuff again. I want to throw stuff again. Uh, I can make it off the. Listen, you might have lost a whole lot of stuff. You might have lost some things in your life. The enemy might have come in and taken some stuff out of your life because you was, you was in a bad place, but that's all right. You can have whatever is left over. Uh, see, God, God is good at serving up leftovers. God is good at, and listen, that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. Listen, I know we, we've made some things at my house, but my wife makes a, an awesome macaroni salad or a rice salad either one of them are good whenever she first makes it they're incredible but the next day <laughs> the next day when that stuff has had time to marinate together oh my god almighty whoa When that stuff has had time to marinate together and to do its magic, you pull that stuff out of the refrigerator and you put it out on your plate and you put it in your mouth and it's better than it was the day before. Yeah. See, God might be performing something in somebody else's life. And you might be standing right there beside of them. And you may not feel a bit of God. But that's all right. See, because what God was doing right there in that person's life, God may tomorrow take that thing that he was doing and let that stuff marinate it overnight. And the next day, you come into the presence of God in your time alone with God. And that thing has had all night long to marinate in your spirit. That thing has had time all night long to be able to marinate and marry together and come together. And that thing is going to be greater in the end than what it ever was in the very beginning. Oh my God, I wish somebody would give God a shout of praise in this place. Oh. <laughs> Listen, I want to tell you something. God did, he did a miracle right before this. He did a miracle in chapter 14 that we've all read the story about and we know exactly what it, we've read it <coughs> a hundred times. But I don't know if you understand what's really in that passage. I want you to, the, in chapter 14, you can go back and look at it. I'm not going to read it to you. Look at it when you go home. But it's the story where Jesus fed the 5,000. With two fish and five loaves. Now, I want you to understand something about this passage. See, he began to take that. That's all they had. He's been preaching. And, and they're coming to him and they're saying, uh, Man of God, uh, all these folks up in here, they've been, they've been here all day. They ain't had nothing to eat. Some of them, listen, look, see that guy over there? He just fell out. And, and he didn't fall out because he's in the spirit. He fell out because he's hungry. He ain't eat all day long. You're long-winded. <laughs> we ain't got nothing to feed them with. They're hungry. We got to do it. He said, all right, feed them. You know, well, we ain't got nothing. He said, well, what do you have? What do you have? 
Not do you have enough. He just said, what do you have? Well, all we got is this little guy over here, this little boy he's out here. All we got is his lunch. He got two fish and five loaves of bread, five little biscuits. That's all there is. Bring it to me. And he took that. And listen, I want you to understand something. You got to understand what, what's happening right here. When you think about food, you, you, you think about a chef. You ever watch the, the Food Network? You ever watch these guys on the Food Network? I know I do. My, my daughter tells me I'm boring because I like to watch that, but I think it's awesome. I like watching it. But these guys, if you tell them that they're going to feed 200 people, they know how to figure up how much food they're going to need to feed 200 people. No more and no less. They know how to figure it out. Now, you got to understand that God is a God of absolute. He's a God of exact. He can be exact. He could have made just enough. But he didn't make just enough. Well, I mean, you, you got to understand his... You know, his name means more than enough. His name means more than enough. So if a God is more than enough, why would he just create enough? But I want you to see something here. God does things exactly precise. He doesn't miss. But I think he was proving a point here in this, in this passage. I want you to understand that the miracle was not in the two fish and five loaves. That was not the miracle. It wasn't about what they were eating. The miracle was in the breaking. Jesus said, bring it to me. And the Bible says that he then blessed it and he broke it. Now, you got to see what's happening here because every time that he would bless it and break it, it began to multiply. And every time he broke it, it would multiply into more. Every time there was a breaking in the bread and in the fish, it would multiply. Some of you done got where I'm going. See, he under, they understand. Listen, sometimes your miracle is not always going to come directly from Jesus. It may not come from him because you've got to understand, Jesus blessed it, broke it, and then he gave it to his disciples to give to the people. Sometimes your miracle is going to come through somebody else. But you've got to understand that the miracle was in him breaking, blessing and breaking that bread and that fish. See, you don't understand that many times in our life, we'll look at our life and we think the times that we have been broken, that the enemy has come into our life. But you got to understand that the enemy is not the one who is breaking you in pieces. You're being broken by the hand of God because God knows that if He can take you and break you, if you can make it through, if you can remain through the breaking, if you... If you can make it through being broken, if you can make it through the time that your life has been broken into pieces, that he is going to, in every breaking, be able to multiply you. Uh, if he can break you and you make it and be sustained in the breaking, <laughs> if you can make it through being broken, if you can make it through the hurt, if you can make it through the pain, if you can make it through the struggle, you got to know that God is able to keep you in the breaking. And in that breaking, He is going to continue to multiply you. And He's going to continue to bless you. He's going to continue to pour out His anointing in your life. And see, I want you to know that God designed for there to be leftover simply because He wants His people to understand I made more than enough for them on that day to the point that they brought back 
back 12 baskets of food and they brought it back. They brought back 12 baskets simply because I wanted you to know that I was more than enough and that I want you to live in the overflow. Uh, Oh, come on. I wish somebody would give God a praise. See, you might not have everything you need right now. You might not have it all together. You might be messed up today. But you got to understand that every time God decides to break you, that every time he decides to break off this or he decides to break that off of your life, take that friend out of your life, get you away from this group of people, get you away from that job, and get you into something. you got to understand that when he's breaking things off, that every time you become broken, God is multiplying. (laughs) See, the miracle is always... And what's left over. The miracle is going to be in that little crumb that falls from the master's table. Listen, the Lord is recycling and renewing people's lives in this world today. we got to be able to depend on God, knowing that He is going to renew and He's going to do something incredible. Listen, I want you to know that there are going to be business deals and opportunities that other people walked over that are going to be miracles in your life. See, there are going to be things that happen in your life. God wants to let prosperity fall right into your hand. God wants you, whenever you're lifting up your hands and you got your hands lifted up to Him, He wants to be able to drop prosperity right in the palm of your hand. God wants to be able to put something in your life. you got to be hungry enough to be willing to catch the crumb. you got to get hungry. See, and that daughter was healed from that very hour, the Bible said. God turned that situation around before the woman ever got back home. Jesus did it with a crumb. If God can do in your life what he's doing right now with a crumb, what could he do in your life if you got hungry enough that you needed the whole loaf? (laughs) Come on, somebody. If he's doing right now, if he's blessing you to the point right now with a crumb, what could he do with the whole loaf? You remember, Ruth, and I'm done. Go ahead, keep playing. I'm done. But I want you to remember something about Ruth. As she gleaned in the master's field, she was happy with gleaning what was left over in the field. She was happy picking up what was left. But the Bible tells us that one day the master came and he saw her gleaning in the field, picking up what was left over. And he looked at the workers and he said, you know what? She is happy just getting the leftovers out of the field. Leave her handfuls on purpose. Leave her those handfuls of purpose for her to glean out of the field. (laughs) See, whenever you are happy with taking the crumb that falls from the master's table, God is going to say, you know what? They have been faithful to trust me that in what little bit they got. They're trusting me with that a little bit. You know what? Let's give them just a little bit more. Why don't you break off a bigger piece of that bread and throw it down? Leave that there for them. And then see what you don't realize is that after that, even though she was being left handfuls on purpose because of her hunger and her obedience and all that she did, she ended up receiving a Boaz and becoming the owner of the very field she was gleaning out of. Y'all didn't hear me. I said she was gleaning in the field but became the owner because God sent her a Boaz because of her faithfulness, because of her trust in God. This Canaanite mother was the one doing the praising and the praying and her daughter was the one who reaped the benefit. See, you are in the presence of God right now. And you might have a need in your life. And you're calling on God and saying, God, if you don't help me, I'm not going to make it. 
have mercy upon me today. I'm going to give you praise whether you do it or whether you don't do it. And when you get that kind of tenacity about you, that you're going to praise God regardless of whether He answers you or not, God is going to come on the scene and He is not going to do just what you need Him to do, but He's going to do a little bit extra and He's going to leave some left over so that you can enjoy the overflow. Don't despise the leftovers. Don't despise the crumbs because praising God in that is going to lead to your promotion in the kingdom. Uh, God is wanting to do something right now. God's wanting to change life. Listen, why don't you stand up to your feet and lift up your hands. Stand to your feet right now and lift up both of your hands. Come on. You got to get desperate in this place. Listen, don't be doing it just because I told you to do it. But I want you to do it because you need God to do something in you. You may not deserve it. You might think you ain't worthy of it. You might think, how in the world can God bless me with the way I've been living? I I ain't read my Bible in a month. I I ain't been to church in a long time. This is the first time I've been here in a long time. I I ain't even really been serving you right. I ain't really been living right. I've been doing some things that are a little bit questionable. And I, I feel like that I really don't deserve to call on you today. But God said if you'll just stand right there and lift up both of your hands and begin to give me some praise. I got something that I am going to drop down out of heaven for you right now. Come on somebody. Come on, there's somebody out there right now. Somebody's getting desperate. I can feel it. There's somebody out there. There's somebody out there that's feeling a little bit desperate. There's somebody out there saying, if, 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 if I can't get a touch from God today, I just don't know if I'm going to make it. i got to get something from God today. I, I may not deserve it. I, I may not be worthy. I, I may be somebody who everybody looks at and is questioning whether or not I should even have my hands lifted up. But listen, I want you to lift up your hands. See, what everybody thinks don't really matter. All that matters is do you have enough tenacity in you to lift up your hands and say, God, I got to have you. I need you. Son of David, Messiah, Jesus, have mercy upon me today. Come on, somebody. Somebody get desperate enough to cry out to God. Come on. Why don't you just get desperate enough to cry out to Jesus? Come on, why don't you get desperate enough to give God a praise right in the middle of what you're in? It may not look right. It may may look like the end of a thing. But the Bible tells us that the end is going to be greater than the beginning. Let it come to the end. That's all right. Because when God gets done, you might think it's the end. But it's just the beginning of what he's going to do in your life. Come on, somebody get desperate right now. Somebody cry out unto him, have mercy on me, Jesus. I need you right now. I need you to do something. And I'm willing to take the crumb. Because I'll do more with the crumb than what anybody else can do with the loaf. Because I know the God that I have my trust. Hallelujah. Uh, I gotta have you. I gotta have you. And in the middle of it, I'm gonna praise you. In the middle of it, I'm going to glorify you because I know who you are. I know who you are. See, I know that you don't look at me the way that everybody else looks at me. Jesus, I know you don't look at my life the way everybody else looks at my life. I know that you look at me and you see my destiny. You see what I'm going to be. My 
my God, my God, are you desperate enough to praise him through it all? Are you desperate enough to honor him in all of it? Even though it's falling down around you, even though it looks like your life is crumbling right before you, when it looks like that nobody else cares, when it looks like that nobody else even sees your need, God sees you. God hears you. God knows you're there. And if you'll begin to praise Him in all of it, He's going to pour out a blessing that there ain't room enough to receive it all. Come on, why don't you right now give God one more shout in this house and you know that He is the God that will provide for you. He'll make a way where there is no way. He will make a way where there is no way. My God. Mm. We're serving a mighty God. Listen, I want you to get ready right now. I want you to get ready with your seed. If you know that He is a God that will provide, you're not going to be afraid to sow a seed in this house today. You're not going to be afraid to sow your seed. I want you to get a seed ready today. I want you to get something ready. Listen, Pastor Marianne already said it today. It's not equal giving, it's equal sacrifice. Whatever is a sacrifice to you, if it's a sacrifice for you to give a dollar, then give a dollar. If it's, a, if it's not a sacrifice to you give a hundred, then give a hundred. If it ain't a sacrifice until you give a thousand, give a thousand. Do whatever is going to be a sacrifice in your life. And if you will do that, you will see God do something incredible in your life. Release what's in your hand so that He can release what's in His hand. See, because as long as you've got that seed in your hand, you can't receive anything. Why? Because your hand is closed up. You can't take anything else because you got that seed right there. You can't, you can't take anything else in that hand because your hand is full of seed. But if you'll release that seed, your hand is now empty and open, ready to receive the blessing of God that He has for you. Listen, I saw something incredible, and it just, it just makes the point so much greater. I saw a, a picture that somebody posted on Facebook. Some of you may, may have seen it. I don't even, even remember who put it out. But it was a picture of a little girl standing and she had in her hand a teddy bear a little small teddy bear in her hand and Jesus knelt down in front of her with his hand out saying trust me she's saying but Jesus I love it and he says trust me with his hand out but what she doesn't see is that behind his back, in his other hand, he has a teddy bear that's this big. And if we will just trust him with that little seed that we sow, he's got a larger harvest in mind for us. Are you ready to sow your seed? Are you ready to sow your seed in the house this morning? Listen, why don't you bring it up here, put it on the steps right here, and, and believe God that God is going to do in your life what nobody else can do. Come on, stand to your feet right now. Get ready to bring your seed. Put it here on the steps to the right or the left, and believe God that God is going to send you a harvest. Even though you might not get nothing but a crumb, you're going to be able to do more with the crumb in your life. Listen, I want to encourage those of you who are watching today online. We're so glad that you were here in the house of God with us online. We're we're so glad that you came, that you're watching. I want you to be blessed as well. God's got a harvest in mind for you. I want you to go over to the giving button there on the website, and I want you to sow your seed in the house today. Believe in God. Listen, you may not have everything you need. You may not have exactly what you need in your life, but God is wanting to send a blessing your way. We love you. We want to bless you. Listen, our bishop is going to be back on Wednesday night, going to be right here in the house, bringing a powerful word from the hand of God. Trust God in your life. Tune back in on Wednesday night and believe that God is going to be a God of incredible miracle in your life. God bless you. We love you. Take us out of here, God.